What up, my name is Brad, welcome back to Five Nine Gaming. Today we're jumping in for the new Pokemon Snap review. It's been out for a couple days now, we've had some time to play it. If you guys saw us over on Twitch. Try testing out the, uh, yep, okay. Yeah. <laughs> he just zoomed, did you see that? He just zoomed in. <laughs> <What>? <laughs> Sorry, uploads over on YouTube, we still got quite a few of those going up, so keep an eye out for that playthrough. We're jumping in today to talk about it. There's a couple different things though. So one, if you enjoy the content that's on this channel, make sure you subscribe, leave us a like down below. And also, you got a chance to win a Google Play card, iOS card over on Instagram and our Twitter. Check the description down below for details. But let's get this started. What is Pokemon Snap? How you feeling, Gresh? Yeah, so I am somebody who picked this game up after playing the original game, you know, 20 plus years ago at this point, and I wasn't really expecting this game to take off as much as it did. Definitely much more popular and widespread, um, more than I thought it would be. But basically, what is this game, right? So basically what you're able to do is you're able to take pictures of Pokemon while providing um, different, you know, you're, you're providing different mechanics, such as items to throw at them. You have apples available to you. You have these balls that illuminate the Pokemon as you throw them at them. You have speed up features. You have different kinds of camera mechanics and it's basically the way i like to think about it is imagine you're at an amusement park and you're on a ride imagine you're at like disney world or something like that and you're riding through i don't know one of like the themed rides and it's just a set it's a set path that you go through a stage and that's the whole level so you're able to just basically maneuver through the stage with your your little like uh i think it's called the neo one the little uh, uh automobile you're in you're inside of and um just taking pictures of pokemon and trying to figure out different ways to make them act different ways um you know there's, there's different ratings different depending on what kind of pictures you take of them. You can feed them apples and take pictures. You can hit them with apples and take pictures. There's a million different things you can do in this game. So even though it is a set path on these levels, there's a bunch of things you can do to make it feel different for you. And again, the purpose of this game is not really much different than I would say any other Pokemon game. It's just to have fun and experience the world that you're in. There's a little bit less freedom, again, as you're on a set path through every single level, but you still get to experience the world, I think, in a decent um, capacity because there's a bunch of different levels involved, different terrains, and stuff like that. And in terms of the actual roster of Pokemon that are, you know, available in this game, there is 214 different Pokemon total. And then for each generation, I would say there is a good handful of Pokemon represented. So gens one through eight, there is a ton of Pokemon to look for. So um, definitely a very well designed and thought out process in terms of how they were going to split up and allocate uh, each different generation into the roster here. Then if we're talking about the aesthetics of this game, it is just gorgeous. I was just looking at this and comparing to Sword and Shield and oh my god, I'm not one of those people who like hate on Sword and Shield for the graphics, but just Pokemon Snap, there was tons of love put into this game. Like some of these photos that I've been taking as I've just been going through, like there's one photo in particular of this pre-marina just with the sunset in the background and oh my god it's just gorgeous so i can't wait i'm gonna be posting those on my social media and i'm just so so happy with how that turned out as i just go through this as i explore each of these courses i've just been awestruck by how amazing it looks i just i can't believe if you compare it to the old pokemon snap there is no contest you wouldn't be able to even imagine that just playing old pokemon snap but it's just i think 10 out of 10 on the aesthetics alone just amazing All right, so for jumping in for a little bit of replayability, this is the next point we want to touch on. I think this was a very big contention point that a lot of people went into this game thinking, I don't know. Because the OG Pokemon Snap, while when we were little kids it came out, most of us, maybe you were 40, who knows, but when it came out, it was very replayable, but also not at the same time. For when the time period it came out, it was fantastic. You could do what felt like a million different things, but as time had gone on, it was like, okay, well, we all know what happens. The Magikarp jumps in the waterfall, you get the Gyarados, great. It is insane how replayable this game is. I actually don't feel confident assigning a direct number because I haven't seen all the different things you can do, but I know just from playing with Goresh on stream, recording the videos and everything, there's legitimately 10, 15 different ways to complete each different level. You'd hop right in and then also, oh, our box is asleep. Hop in the next time, okay, now he's coiled up on the ground. Going there, slacking's taking a nap, right? Next time he's charging at me. Like, it's fantastic. And I think that they really captured life. It sounds kind of weird to describe it that way, but they captured the life of Pokemon, where you have these Pokemon that have their babies and they're walking around different, or they're getting in a fight this time, or they're trying to pick up food, and it's so well done. 
Compared to the N64 one, uh, I, obviously it's significantly better, but it, it brought that same feeling the N64 one had just with literally thousands of more options. So fantastic. Yeah, and then one other thing I will hop in just to talk about real quick in terms of the replayability. I have, you know, 25 plus hours into this game at this point, and I would say that I'm probably one third of the way done with everything that you could do in this game. The way that they sort of, I guess, elongated the lifespan of this game in terms of getting to 100% completion are, is through the request system. And the way the request system works is it's basically a mission for doing a specific action in a course. So, you know, make Arbok scare Venusaur away or something like that. And you have to figure out how you would actually go ahead and do that. You have to, you know, perform certain actions to make Arbok and Venusaur meet each other in the stage. And then you have to do something to make them, uh, you know, make Arbok scare Venusaur away. Then you got to take a picture at a specific time. So those missions are really what are going to allow you to have a, a very, I guess, longer experience playing this game and you don't you know you, you go through the, the normal story i think i completed the normal story somewhere around 12 to 14 hours in and then the the other 12 to 14 hours in the game that i've spent has just been doing the requests and there's a lot of requests in this game i'm talking 200 plus requests i think in this game exists so um, if you're somebody who's trying to figure out how to do all of them it's going to take you a long time so don't jump into this game and think okay i'll sit down i'll beat it in three hours and then i'll just sort of like rate it based off of my experience with with that because this is a much more in-depth game and don't don't forget also each stage has areas where you can also choose to go down one path or another so not only do you have night and day for each for some stages you also have levels one two and three you have different paths within levels one two and three like there's a lot going on Then getting into some of the online multiplayer features here, you can actually share your photos with friends and even with just random strangers online. It's kind of like a social media like system where you can go in, you can like other people's photos. There's even a ranking system based on how many likes each photo has. And overall, I don't think a lot of us have really gotten too in depth into that, but it is really cool. So I think it should make it so you can compete with your friends and have a good time. The little bit I've seen of the online stuff, um... I've played other games, so example, like Kingdom Hearts 3 or something has an online thing, but it feels very forced. Like a lot of games have, it just feels like it's like, well, I don't really want to do this, you know? But, or it's like a complete fake online, like Summon and Moon had, where it was like, oh wow, 1300 people like my, no, they didn't, you know, in the game. But on this one, it's just, it doesn't feel that way. It feels very fluid part of it. Like you said, we haven't dove super in depth to it, but I mean, I've seen thousands of posts on Twitter already just from it, of people taking pictures, people you would never think playing Pokemon Snap and putting of these cute pictures of Pokemon and I love it. I think it just adds a huge thing to the game. And just to add on to what Brad was saying earlier, um, you know, the, in addition to being able to share photos with your friends, they actually have a uh, special reward that you get from the requests that I was talking about earlier, which include filters to add to your photos. You can add stamps to your photos. You can add different backgrounds. So there's ways that you can actually design specifically how you want your photos to look and then put those up on the, you know, the sharing system in the game so that people can look at it. They can like your pictures. It's kind of like a mini social media platform in the game. Also on top of that, once you clear the main story of the game you get access to the, the score feature for each stage so every time you run through a stage you get a score at the end and there's actually a way you can uh, individually put uh, or compare your scores to the people online there's actually a leaderboard that you can see okay my score you know for this stage is 2.5 million what is this guy's score or you know how are ways that i can increase my score on the stage if you want to be competitive about this game which is you know i don't really think is the core attractiveness to what this game is meant to be but if you do want to explore that area of the game that is something that you can look at as well and i will say as far as the core mechanic of this game i do think like brad said this is a good experience like basically if you're taking these photos you want to share them with friends so having a system to do that really just helps Overall, we are comfortable giving this game a rating of an 8.5. Um, so overall, I would say that the game is very well designed. I think they clearly knew that uh, it being a game that's designed around aesthetics, right? It's literally about taking pictures of the game. So the game should look good in that way. They definitely harked a lot on uh, the fact that, you know, the graphics should be very good. There should be aesthetics in terms of the background, uh, you know, the sun setting, the night sky with the stars in them, the moon, uh, reflections, all that kind of stuff. The light, you know, being reflective of 
off certain certain uh, surfaces. It all looks really, really good. And for me, when I jumped in for the first few levels, that was something that I immediately noticed. All the different terrains were, looked really good. It looked really, I'm not going to say natural because it is still a Pokemon game. Um, but in terms of the art style that they went for, it was definitely very effective. So those were the very good parts about the game. And again, the replayability, while we didn't really anticipate it to be super replayable, it actually exceeded a lot of our expectations in terms of how much content there actually was to do in the game. The few points where I think the game lacked. So, you know, we gave it an 8.5. The reason why it wasn't a 9 or a 10 was there were areas where the game definitely felt like it could be a little bit repetitive, even though there are, there are a lot of options for you. Like, again, we mentioned the uh, requests. Once you start going through the same stage, like four, five, six, seven times, you've seen a lot of the, uh, you know, different actions that can be performed by a lot of the Pokemon, and it starts to become a little bit repetitive. But at that point, it's just like, you know, you've gone through it enough times, you, know, you can switch stages, you can do whatever. And then the other thing I will say about requests specifically is that a lot of the requests conditions are so specific that it's almost impossible to figure them out without looking up the, what the conditions are online. There are certain requests that I've done for a, a certain stages in the game that have literally seven to nine steps to get them to activate and you have to perform them all on the exact like correct sequence you have to be at a right angle you have to take pictures at like this time in the state like it's really specific they should have maybe made those conditions a little bit more relaxed but um so i mean that's one of the reasons why i think you know this game wasn't a perfect 10 out of 10 but the you know the overall request feature i think was a step in the right direction i'm super comfortable with the 8.5 uh just based on portions i've played because I've, I've just completed the main story and i'm looking for legends at this point but i do agree with you that there are certain points i mean this would be a spoiler territory very very minor minor spoiler spoiler, uh, but you can get Mew relatively early on and you would never know that. And that's not a bad thing, but you would never know that, you know, without obviously going to the request and looking up online and flipping it backwards, you know, oh, look, there it is. Boom. Good to go. And it's a bit, you know, that's the kind of stuff where it's like, I don't want it shoved in my face, but I do kind of want it to be somewhat there, but it's so far from a bad thing that if that's the worst thing in the game, it's fantastic game. Let's put it that way. Yeah, I agree with that because I think with the request, it being a little more difficult and a little more yeah a little more difficult to actually figure out how to do it makes it so if you don't want to look up those things you can spend a lot of time in this game trying to figure it out experimenting with different combinations and then eventually when you get it that's a great feeling so ultimately it is a little frustrating but i think that it is still good at the end of the day yeah that's a good point as well because there were times where i mean i was doing requests I, I finished the game like literally in one day and i was doing requests before any guides existed for the specific request that i was doing and i'm like okay there's nothing online about how to beat this i'm gonna go in and just try a bunch of different things and a lot of requests i just simply couldn't figure out but there were some that i actually did yet and it did definitely make you feel like you accomplished something from that so that was definitely a good feeling all right well that has been our new pokemon snap review again if you did enjoy make sure you subscribe down below leave a like check out our creators we got gresham waffles over here uh that's about where we gotta close it out on this one 8.5, fantastic game, heavily, heavily recommend. Don't go into it thinking, oh, I'm just taking pictures of Pokemon. You're seeing the beautiful landscapes of Pokemon. And that's about it. We're going to get out of here. We appreciate you guys for watching. Thank you so much. Deuces.